Hey, my name is Marcel and welcome to Carlos 3D. Hi everyone, I'm in Germany for the Form Next and today I have a lot of interviews with different brands. Let's begin. The Form Next is one of the biggest 3D printing show of the world. This is my first time visiting this show and I'm really excited because there is a lot of brands and a lot of content creators. I did some interviews with different brands and today I want to show you all of this. Let's go! Hey, I'm with Nadia from Bamboo Lab and today we are going to discuss about this amazing booth. Nadia, thank you for the interview. Bonjour everyone. So Nadia, thank you for the for the welcoming and your booth is awesome. You built an entire city around it. Can you tell us more about it? Absolutely. Actually, the whole team, uh, the Maker World team was busy printing out and designing a lot of these things for the whole month to be here at Formnext. So big shout out to the team. And uh, yeah, what I want to emphasize here yes. is that Everything, first of all, is 3D printed. This is what it is, is the showcase, a preview of a project that we will be releasing next year. It's going to be uh, a hardware modules and with software tools and uh, yeah, yeah, and all the whole design community and ecosystem around it. It's like very maker based, right? Like do it yourself. Self, build it yourself, you get the hardware and then you can actually play with it. So. The big thing here is all about play. So educational stuff. Educational, yeah, STEM definitely very. <laughs> That's very nice. That's very nice. Like new generations yeah. and the kids needs to get involved in these kind of things. That's the fun part. You can involve the whole family. So, <laughs> so absolutely. So nice. And Nadia, I'm sorry to ask, but people in French are asking me every day, like mm -hmm. next Bumble Lab. Mm -hmm. what is going to be and when is coming yes <laughs> i know <laughs> yes sorry i unfortunately i can't say much about the new printer everything is still under wraps fully confidential until next year but stay tuned it's gonna be released in q1 uh, next year and uh, yeah it's gonna be worth it so it's gonna be worth the wait thank you nadia very much I really appreciate the patience, the patience from all our customers and and the interested the uh, users around the world. Of course, and we appreciate your machines. Like you are opening the the 3D printing world for a lot of, of people, mm -hmm. and we appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nadia. Yes, as you heard, we don't have any information about this new machine. In the meantime, I'm going to play with some of the things they are showcasing in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> And now let's see the new 3D printer from Elegu and the updates for the Orange Storm Giga. Chris, how are you today? I'm great, thank you. Are you enjoying the show? Yeah, it's, it's perfect, but I'm a little bit tired. Uh, me too. Uh, we, uh, been, it's been a busy day, a lot of visitors. Yeah, because you have an amazing booth, a lot of crazy things, and we have like new material coming out. I saw the Orange Storm Giga, so we will talk about that. But tell me, please, about the Centauri. Is that correct? Centauri Carbon? Yeah, Centauri Carbon. It, it's Elegu's first Core XY printer. We are very excited to show it at the booth. We showed it last time in Los Angeles uh, at uh, T uh, City as well. And uh, we draw a lot of attention. I think it's going to be a great product. It's beautiful and it looks like really solid materials and, and sturdy, right? Uh, yes, because we are looking at the, the products uh, on the market and uh, I think it's better that we use a die cast uh, aluminum for the structure because the structure is what makes difference when you well, you have to make sure that the print quality is good. Last question, Chris. Orange Storm Giga. A lot of people were talking about, I'm very interested by, by this beautiful machine because it's like pretty big. And as, as you may know, I'm doing cosplay yeah. and a lot of big stuff. And first year was a little rough, I think, but you corrected a lot of things. I'm just seeing working like all the day. What do you improve and what was the, the support of the community and hearing all the feedback? What was the experience to, to, to improve this machine? It's true, we did have a little bit problem with the, the firmware or, or everything else, but we 
keep hearing from the problems from our end users and we are constantly improving them. And so till now, I think the, the, the performance of this product is much better. It requires a lot of uh, learning curve. Tweaking, right? Yeah, like you have to let do leveling, you, you have to, you know, spend like 40 minutes to, to assemble the machines with at least two people. After that, I think the print quality is improved. And we are playing in another level. Like this is for people who want to go further and a 40 minutes, one hour or couple hours of setup is nothing if you want to go like really big. So Chris, thank you again for this interview. I think a lot of people in France will love it and great job. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And now let's visit the booth that for me stole the show. Yes, I'm talking about the Prusa booth and they were presenting their new machine, the Prusa Core 1. This was a big surprise. No one was expecting this from Prusa. Everyone was very excited and as you can see, it was crowded. Hello everyone, thanks for coming. I will not take uh, much of your time. Uh, I would just like to introduce you to our next chapter in industrial design, uh, the new Prusa Core 1. And this is it. Prusa invited me to a private room to discover this machine. I was able to have a closer look to the machine and oh boy, it's beautiful. Thanks to the Prusa team for the invitation and I can't wait to test this machine. Whoa! This is the core one and it's awesome. I'm Mikolas from Prusa. Hey, so as you can see, I really think it's quite stylish. We spent quite some time on the design. You have the iconic orange. What? I think it's quite tasteful. Hopefully, viewers will agree. But yeah, it's now an enclosed Core XY 3D printer. It's fast, it prints really high quality, precise prints. Uh, it actually takes up less space than the Mark IV, but prints like significantly bigger prints. You can go 27 millimeters high. I don't know if it's quite big enough for like an Ironman helmet, but many parts will now fit in one piece, which you Previously, maybe had to cut into two. Uh, the placement of the spool is made. It's not in the back. It's on the side. It has the next extruder, which you know from the Mark for us. It has a awesome cooling, so you can print really steep overhangs. So this is all steel, uh, steel sheets. So it's built like a tank. It's really extremely durable. And the cool thing is that it's kind of an exoskeleton thing. So there, it's not a frame and then you put panels over it to build the enclosure. Then you have this, these indents and they are very functional. Uh, they, first of all, they are a great place for all sorts of mods and customizations. And since it's steel, you can just do everything on magnets, which I already designed a few, few mods and I, it's so fun to just put everything on magnets. But also, it makes the internal volume smaller. And the smaller you make it, the faster it heats up. So the chamber actually goes to 55 degrees. Uh, and there are two fans in the back. So if you want 55 degrees, you will get 55 degrees inside. But if you are printing PLA or PETG, which is actually what most prints are made from, I have the graphics on my shirt. I think it's fun. This is G-code for homing. And this is M84 is disabled stepper motors. That's the last thing that happens in a print. And yeah, so it's just a neat little graphics on the printing. So this is the core one. I think we are all really excited to, I know it's out, it's amazing. It's amazing to be able to show it to people. And yeah, I hope people will like it. Thanks to Mikula for the presentation and I'm pretty sure people will like it. Prusa was presenting another version of this machine. This is not commercialized, but I can say to you, a lot of people would love to have this machine in their living room. I was also able to discover their professional options for 3D printing. It was awesome to see a fully automated 3D printing farm. Next, we are going to talk with Flashforge. They were presenting a new machine for multicolor. 
Hey, I'm with Wu and he will be presenting us the new 3D printer multicolor machine from Flashforge. Hi Wu, how are you today? Good, what about you? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the interview. So Flashforge, I saw a lot of uh, new printers and very beautiful ones, great job. Thank you. Um, this for next uh, we bring like, uh, we have our WaxJet 510, it's uh, a WaxJet 3D printer. And let me continue with this one because this is the first time I see something like this. I know that this type of technology is not new. And for the moment I don't have 10 grand to buy a machine like this. But being able to having this at home, it's kind of impressive. Then we got our uh, three type of FDM printers, 85X and uh, Guider 4 Pro. Those two machines are equip equipped with uh, IFS. The uh, full name is uh, Intelligent Filament System made by our V Flash Forge, and it can allow the printer to print four color. And then we got the Guider 3 Ultra. It's a, a huge printer. Can pr it can bring like uh, 330 to 330 and uh, 600. So that's the big one. Yeah, that's. Uh, and what about what about the AAD FIX? What what is the build volume? The build volume is uh, 220 cube. It costs 399 dollars. Great with multicolor. Yeah, with of course with multicolor. It allows to print PLA and the TPU 95A. I believe Great. this is the first machine that can print PLA and the TPU 95A at the same time. And the best thing of Fornix for me was to meet Frankly Build. This guy here is the one who inspired me to have my own 3D printed Iron Man suit. I'm here with Tony Stark. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm Carlos 3D. Welcome to my channel. I 3D print Iron Man suits and uh, you should too. My next project, well, in 2025, I want to start a new Iron Man suit, so I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a remake of my Mark 85, because I made my Mark 85 five years ago. It's old, it's broken. Even this thing was printed almost four years ago, so there's issues, there's errors. I didn't know nearly everything I knew back then, so now I get to redesign the suit, remake it, and not only learn everything that I've learned, or use everything I've learned in five, four or five years, but the community, things what like you've learned and actually brought into the community, all the other Iron Man builders, I get to take all those ideas and kind of put them together, because it wasn't just me working on this. It's it, it, They say it takes a village, and that's what's cool about the Iron Man community. We all learn off of each other. So is it bad being the Iron Man guy for so long? I don't think so. I think it's a kind of a cool little title to have and being recognizable for that. But as I've tried to focus in my path is to start to diversify a little bit away from that. I changed my logo. I got rid of the Iron Man logo just kind of for that. Hey man, you'll, you'll, your, yours works. You'll get there or you, if you're okay staying the Iron Man guy. There's not, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with that because if that's how people recognize you, people recognize you for that. But as that starts to grow, so will people in just recognizing you without your suit, with just your face. I'm sure you've gotten recognized before, like, and you start to lean more towards into that. Maybe Iron Man will fade away a little bit as Marvel might start to decline, but maybe, you know, maybe you'll be the Doom guy eventually. Maybe you'll start doing, moving into another cosplay. So being able to be able to diversify and expand, it's not a bad thing, but I think it's cool to be like recognized as like, oh, you're that Iron Man guy from TikTok. It's like, yeah, sometimes. And this was the Fort Next 2024. I had a great time here and I hope to come back next year. If you like this video, please support my content with a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. See you next time with another vlog or another project. My name is Carlos. Bye bye. Listen me a little bit. Carlos. Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Very comfortable. Well, repeat. You don't know speak Spanish. No, I don't. It was, it's, a, it's a movie joke. It's an Anchorman joke. You'll, you'll get it. Someone will get it.